So thank you, Alan, for the introduction. So um, like uh, Alan said, um, Edouard, I'm a data scientist at N26, and we've been um, having a Raza chatbot live for about a year now. And uh, today I'm going to talk about how we actually build scalable chatbots by empowering content creators. This is a very serious title, but basically it's going to be pretty hands-on, and I'm going to show you all the tools and the workflows that we built around uh, Raza to um, build uh, chatbots. So the presentation is going to be split, uh, split in three parts. So first, uh, who we are, why we needed a chatbot at N26. Uh, second part is how we implemented it, and the third part is like the challenges that uh, arose while building it, and how we um, solved them. So basically, quick inter introduction. Like Alan mentioned, N26 is a mobile bank uh, in the US and in, in, in Europe, sorry, the UK and in the US. We launched in the US quite recently. So we have over three and a half million customers. We are live in 26 countries. We serve customer and customer service in five different languages, and we are live, like I mentioned, in three different markets. So what is a market for us? A market is basically a country or a set of countries that share the same uh, flows. So like all our European customers have basically the same products. We have a slightly different product in the UK, and we have a slightly different product in the US. And this is an important um, word to uh, remember because I'm going to talk about how we actually launch a bot in all our markets in parallel. Um, so yeah, so why, do we, why, why did we need a chatbot? So like the first uh, problem that we had, or not really a problem, but uh, we have a very um, rapidly growing cr uh, customer base. So less than a year ago, we had one and a half million customers. As of June 2019, we had uh, three and a half million. So basically, it was very hard, it's very hard for us to keep up with the growing demand. Um, uh, how do we let people ask us questions? So as a bank, we want to be always available when people have questions, uh, however um, easy that question can be. So here, I have a, s a small example. So let's, let's wait until the gives goes to the beginning. So here, the bot introduces itself. The user just wants to know how they can download their balance statement. Super easy question. They could definitely find that answer in the support center. But uh, we just want to have users be able to do what we call natural language querying. So here, the user says, how, uh, hi, how can I download my balance statements? We have a nice little deep link that goes in the app and shows you where you can find your uh, balance statement within the app. And what we find nice with this is basically you can also educate the user, and then they won't contact you um, again later on. So that's the second reason why we wanted to have a chatbot. How do we support people around the clock? So lots of our customers use our product uh, to travel, and uh, we wanted to make sure that we can uh, be reachable 24-7, so a chatbot just made sense. And um, the final reason is, uh, I'm sure everybody in this room has experienced this, is how do we solve problems in one contact? So when you are a bank, you have lots of people contacting you. And um, I mean, in my personal experience, I've been forwarded from one service to another many times before actually being able to uh, be in touch with the right person um, within the bank. And so that's where our chatbot comes into play. So what happens is when you contact our chatbots, we will try, like the chatbot will know and store in the tracker if, um, we ha or if you have expressed an intent, so like the reason why you're contacting us, and if you have, we'll put you in touch with the right specialist. And if you haven't, so this is the example here, we just have a, an angry customer, let's wait until the gift reloads, um, but basically an angry customer just contacts us, says, uh, hey, I want to talk to an agent, well, I, I want to talk to a human, so let's wait a bit. Um, here we go again, so the bot introduces itself, some people just don't want to talk to bots, right? And um, unfortunately, and um, they just say, I want to talk to a human. And the bots will then know that no intent has been picked up previously in the conversation and will prompt the user to ask them why they're contacting us. And with this, we call this rule-based routing. We're going to be able to put um, customers in touch with the right agents to solve, solve their problem in one contact. And this wouldn't be possible without um, a chatbot, basically. So uh, really briefly, that's why we needed a chatbot. Then how we built it. So pretty straightforward. So we use Jenkins for our deployment pipelines. We use Nomad, which is basically a competitor to um, Kubernetes for our container orchestration. We use Docker for our containers. We code in Python, and obviously we use uh, Raza. So uh, just a quick reminder. I, I'm sure everybody in the room has seen uh, these sort of like training files before. Um, but for the NLU side of Raza, that's what a training uh, file looks like. So you just have a, um, so it's supervised learning. You have a set of intents uh, that you define yourself. And per intent, you have a set of examples. So here, what I highlight in orange is like balance statement. That's a value taken by the entity statement type. And it's important to remember that this value is in English, because I'm going to come back to that later in the presentation. Um, so yeah, it's just um, zoomed in. And then so the um, training data for the core part of Raza, um, the first part is stories. So a story is basically just a representation of a conversation between um, a user and a, a chatbot. So here, you just uh, greet the, um, the user greets. The, the bot, the bot says welcome, and then the user says they want their statements with a specific type of statement, which is balance statement, and the bot responds. So this is exactly the story that corresponds to the example I showed at the beginning of the presentation. And here again, 
uh, pay attention to balance statement that's uh, obviously hard-coded in English. Um, so here again, zoomed in. And then the second part of um, the training data, if I may, for uh, Raza Core is basically the domain where you just define all the actions that your bot can take. And you also define the template for the utterances that you're going to use um, in your bots. So here again, the template um, is obviously in English because we want an English chatbot to speak English. And I'm going to come back to that uh, later. So what were the challenges for us? So like I mentioned, we're live in 26 countries. We actually offer uh, customer service uh, in five languages. So the first challenge was how do we actually serve a chatbot in five languages that basically has the same information for all the languages? And the second challenge was how do we serve multiple markets? So like I mentioned, we have a, a slightly specific uh, product depending on the market that we're in. So for the EU, we have quite a rich product. And the UK and US, the product has uh, limited features. Um, but we still want to share as much information as we can about the product across different markets. Uh, the third challenge, which is maybe the most interesting um, for, you, every, for everyone here, is how do we write custom actions without writing Python? So um, we have a lot of content creators that um, are not really um, coders or developers, right? And we still want to give them the chance to write custom actions without actually having to write Python. And that's where we built a tool around it uh, for them. And finally, more on the deployment side, how do you deploy to diff um, different markets all at once? Um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. So the implementation. So um, very quickly, we realized building a chatbot is not a pure data science project, as other data science projects uh, could be. But it's really a, a project that involves a lot of content creation, right? And so we realized really quickly that 50% of the job is done by data scientists, and 50% is done by content creators that are um, you know, writing, training data for intents, creating stories and, and everything. So the responsibilities at N26 are split this way. So for data scientists, you need to store the training data. You need to train the models. You need to do all sorts of testing to make sure that your bot is uh, reasonable. And um, you need to do the API development to integrate with the rest of your backend services. So that's the job of a data scientist. What a content creator does for us is basically they have to pretty much download their brain into uh, intense stories and uh, entities. And because um, we have customer service people that uh, know the flows and know the processes to solve uh, issues, that basically write stories from that. And this is a nice mix of this and actual uh, training data we collected with um, real life conversations. Also, we're a very um, fast growing company, so we have a lot of product releases that the chatbot has to know about. So it's a lot of maintenance to just keep up with the product releases. And um, finally, when we add a new language or we add, add a new market, the content creators have to uh, well add the content for this language or market. So the first challenge, like I mentioned earlier, is how do we serve content in five languages? So one concept that I'm sure everybody is familiar with is the concept of locale. Basically, if you're following, we have five languages in the EU market, one language in the UK market, and one language in the uh, US market. So we have seven locales in total. And a locale is just a combination of uh, a language and a region. So um, the locales that we serve are basically French, English, uh, or like the languages that we serve is French, German, English, Italian, and Spanish. And um, really quickly, we realized we needed to have a um, content management system. So again, this is not at all an advertising for Contentful, but it's just the content management system that we work with, because we were working with them uh, before. And um, I can show you basically quickly what it looks like. So when you look at uh, an utterance, for instance, so we have like the, all the, our conversational utterances. And here you have all our utterances that are stored for, whoop, yeah. um, for basically English, uh, for English Europe. So that's our locale. So that's the English that we speak in Europe. Um, and then we also have the same utterances, but for French. And this is making our life very, very easy because we just have a um, sort of like a, a layer on top of Raza that helps us um, store uh, content. And then when we train our models, we just uh, call Contentful via an API and um, we write everything to files uh, accordingly. And what's nice with Contentful is the non-technical content people, they can uh, write content there without having to code and use GitHub, for instance. And data scientists, obviously, we use uh, GitHub. Um, here, a second interesting point that I mentioned that I touched upon earlier is balanced statements. This is very much uh, English for everyone, right? And so what I mentioned is uh, we want to use the same model in all the five languages for Europe. And uh, by the same model, I mean the same core model. So we want to use the same stories, essentially. So of course, we have different NLU models for the different languages, but we want to use the same core model. And as you know, when you write a story, you're going to have to have balanced statements um, that's taken in it. So, what we needed to do is we need to make entities language agnostic. And for this, we are using Wikidata, which is a, a, an open uh, knowledge base, basically, that allows us to map any value taken by any entity to a unique ID. And this unique ID will apply to all the languages. So what I mean, in effect, is basically we have a file called entity mapping, where balance statements is actually just mapped to ID 
Q141339. So this is real data from uh, Wikidata. And what's nice is you actually have this labels for English. You also have it for French and all the different languages that we serve. And what's really nice is then our NLU model, when, when it picks up an entity, instead of returning uh, balanced statements, what it returns is, uh, oh, sorry. So we add this um, values to a synonym. And Raza NLU is uh, nice enough to uh, return the value of the synonym. So um, when we make a call and when we say, hi, how can I do my, my balanced statement? The value that I get returned is Q1413339. And this has proven to be very, very helpful for us because we can then use the same stories for all our languages. And this is really, uh, I can't stress this enough, um, if you want to have a multilingual chatbot, you, you're going to have to use the same stories. Otherwise, it's just a, a nightmare to maintain. Um, yeah, and so now, uh, the way we write the story is uh, basically like this. The value is the same for all languages, and um, yeah, it just works uh, very, very nicely. So um, how do we serve multiple markets? So like I mentioned, we serve EU, UK, and US. And um, for the parts of the product that are the same, we want to use the same um, stories, obviously. And so for this, we think that the best way to um, be consistent is through sharing. So actually, our EU product and our UK product are very similar, and our US product is actually quite different. So we don't share any story between the EU, uh, EU product and the US product, but we share quite a lot with the UK. And an example of this is how do we actually do this, and how do we allow content creators to do this on their own? Is basically we just have um, inclusion config file where basically um, you can just say you want to include some uh, specific stories for a specific market, and you want to exclude one. So in this case, you're just going to include the stories for one statement UK, but you're going to exclude the stories for one statement in, in Europe if your flow were different in the UK to get your balanced statement. So again, this is all doable by um, content creators. On content for is just a, a YAML file um, that's very easy to um, edit, basically. So maybe the most interesting part of the presentation is how do we write custom actions without uh, writing Python? And this has proven to be very, very helpful for us to um, give content creators the tools uh, they need to um, you know, have a smarter chatbot. So basically, to go back to the basis, I don't think anybody, oh, maybe we can read this actually. But uh, custom actions are just Python code. So actually, for people who know Python, this is actually real like live code. Um, for people that can read Python, this is actually pretty straightforward. We'll just make a backend call depending on the, res on the, um, on the uh, result of the request. We just say we escalate to, we greet um, the users saying that they can escalate to an agent or not. So basically here, we just make a backend call and uh, when we greet a user, um, we check if they can escalate to an agent because we have a, a, also an escalation a possibility when uh, you want to talk to a real agent. And um, if live agent available, then you just utter welcome one and two. And if no agent is available, you just uh, utter welcome no humans. So it's pretty straightforward. It's pretty plain Python code, but this is actually gibberish for anybody who doesn't know uh, any Python. So we managed to boil this down to something like this. So this is, again, a YAML file that the content creators can um, write themselves. So it's pretty easy. You just have a set of conditions. And here you check the condition if a live agent is available is true, then you just dispatch a few utterances. And if the condition is false, then you just dispatch um, other utterances. So this is very, very, very helpful for us because um, in our um, chatbots, most of the um, um, custom action that we write are either backend calls or just checks on slots. And so if I move to the next slide, um, what we do for this is we just create a dynamic, we just uh, have action being created dynamically from a YAML file. And we have all sorts of conditions that are uh, possible. So you can just check the values of some slots. So you can check if slot, slot one is true. You can also negate the value, the value of a slot. You can check if a slot is in a specific list. And then we have two specific um, backend calls. So first one is to check if an agent is available, so true or false. And then intent detected is uh, what I touched upon at the very beginning of the presentation, is uh, we check if we have detected an intent to know if we can escalate right away to an agent. And uh, if we haven't detected an intent, basically in the tracker, um, we won't actually escalate to an agent right away. We'll prompt the user to tell us why they are um, contacting us. And um, so if all these conditions are met, you can set some slots. So it's also very helpful for us to set some categorical slots um, in the stories um, to basically guide the flow uh, that the user will go into. And you can also um, dispatch um, a list of uh, utterances. So this, again, has proven to be very, very helpful for us to uh, create um, actions that are um, making our bots uh, smarter. And finally, I only have 20 seconds left, so I have to go quickly on this. Um, how do we deploy to different markets? So it's a horrible screenshot of our Jenkins pipeline. Basically, we do everything in parallel. So all the tests we do for the EU markets, UK markets, US markets, 
And uh, we deploy on two different AWS clusters, so one in um, Europe and one in the US. Um, so yeah, that's uh, about it. But basically, everything is in one GitHub repository. Um, the, the training data is stored on Contentful, and we deploy everything in parallel uh, for all our markets. That's about it. So if you have any questions, um, feel free to ask. I think we have, yeah. So uh, actually, we've been in. So we have shared this with Raza, and uh, actually, yeah, maybe at some point we might uh, include it. But it's the thing is, it's we made it for our use case. So we just have to make sure that it generalizes as well. But uh, I think it's been very helpful for us. So I don't see why we wouldn't open source it. Definitely. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty straightforward. So like I showed you on this slide, you don't have that many possibilities. Um, you know, negation, uh, lists, and then two different calls. So we just have a, a conference page, basically, where we list everything. And we're adding features as we go. Um, but we have a pretty small content team anyway, so it's, it's very easy to keep track of uh, yeah, things. Uh, it's fairly easy. We just have different config files. So um, we basically, at each deploy, we deploy a swarm of containers. And so our NLU model and our core models are actually different microservices. We decided to go for this uh, before Raza 1.0 was released. Um, and so we kept it like this. But we have different, like it's just running in different containers. So you just have different config files. It's uh, fairly easy. Yeah. yeah. What do you mean? So, uh, did I understand correctly that you're using the same stories for different languages? No. Uh, so we use the same intents. That's true. But of course, to train the French model, we put French sentences in it. Um, but um, yeah, we haven't really noticed any, uh, any big issue. Uh, some issues that might have happened is like um, some words, for instance, in French, when you want your um, like, uh, bank statement or bank uh, information, it's called RIB. And so you have to look for specific values taken by some entities for specific langu languages. But that's, that's about it. Like the rest, our product is the same across languages, so it's, uh, it works out pretty well. But as far as the conversation part goes, are you changing the topic? Uh, dialogue and Yeah. I know oh, we use the same stories, yeah. So, but it doesn't really matter. Like, uh, the, um, Basically, the output layer, so like the output language is just the output rights, but like the flow should be the same. So like if you speak English or French or German, we should solve your case in the same way, right? So uh, yeah. I think we have one last question. Sorry, I can Uh, so we don't do any translation because um, basically, really, we have like a one NLU model per language, and then this NLU model, model will return an intent. And like I showed here, um, with this um, nice uh, like entity mapping that we have, all the entity values are language agnostic, so we don't need to do any machine translation. Our core model is like language agnostic, so that's why we don't need to do any. Um, Translation, and then for the output layer, so when uh, Raza Core tr tries to dispatch something, we just have like an NLG server um, running on the side that just, um, you just send it like the name of the utterance that you want to dispatch, and it just, just dispatches it in the right uh, language. Sorry? I... So, like, so like our NLU models are obviously um, per language, so we have one, one for French, English, German, whatever. But our core model, it's just one, uh, one model, basically. Yeah, that's it. Cool.